Chandra with PDAC 2022. Today we are having Ross with us today. So hi Ross, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Yeah, good, good to so, be here. Do you mind start, start by introducing yourself a bit and your company? Sure, so um, uh, Ross McElroy, I'm the president and CEO of Fission Uranium Corp. Uh, Fission Uranium is a name uh, suggests we are a uranium focused company. We're development. We have a project in Canada's Athabasca Basin. So it's located in northern Saskatchewan. Um, our project we found about 10 years ago was the initial discovery and uh, you know, so throughout time we've been able to expand the resource, um, start working on economics. So right now we're working on a feasibility study because uh, ultimately we see this uh, as being a producing asset. So that's really the focus of the company is moving forward. Our PLS uh, project, the Triple R deposit, getting it to be a, a producing asset by the um, end of this decade uh, towards the early part of next. That's right. So your company has done multiple feasibility studies. Do you mind sharing some of your most pro most recent progress? Yeah, so what we have completed uh, is a pre-feasibility study. Those were done in 2019 and at that time we settled on uh, how we're going to develop the project. It'll be an underground mining operation uh, accessed by a decline uh, and then you know working that way rather than uh, an open pit at surface which was the first way we looked at it but we, we decided to settle on an underground it just made more sense it's uh, less costly uh, much smaller environmental footprint so for a lot of reasons and, and also uh, much better accepted too when we were talking to local people so We've taken that uh, information and we've now moved it on to the feasibility study, which is, you know, similar, but, but it's a much more detailed study. And it's, a, the, you know, it'll be the information that we require in order to make a, a production decision, whether we go, no go. That would be the, um, really what, what the aim of the feasibility is. And we intend to finish that by the end of, of this year. I see. So... Are you in the process of raising capitals and uh, how are you going to do that? No, well, no, right now we have about 37, 38 million dollars in the treasury. So that's certainly enough money to get us through the feasibility study right now. Um, uh, and, you know, we're, we're where we need to be. So we're, we're financed to, to get the, the work done that we're needing to to get us into the, you know, the next major phase, which is the environmental impact assessment. Um, so I think we're pretty comfortable on the capital market side right now. Um, ultimately, you know, we'll be looking, you know, if this is, if everything's positive, we'll have to uh, finance the mine. So that's a different sort of discussion. But for right now, for the kind of work we're doing, we're, we have the, the funds in the, in the treasury that we need. That's good. So how do you see uranium price in the short and long run? Going up. Going I think the, uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh, Pretty fair to say that the price of uranium is is at the very beginning of a long, long bull market run, and really the the reasons for that is um, the appreciation, I guess, that nuclear power is such a key part of the clean energy equation, right? You know, we have um, it, it's a, in order to have electricity, you have to generate it, and so this is really what, what uh, the, the nuclear power plants can do and do it in a clean manner, be, you know, without, uh, otherwise your alternatives are fossil fuels and, and that kind of thing. So nuclear is such an important part of the, of the equation. So the demand is absolutely there and, be, and there's an electrification of everything, including uh, everything we plug in, all the cars, electric vehicles in the future. The demand is certainly there, the supply is a is a trickier uh, part of the equation you know it, i think globally you're looking at uranium pricing prices having to be somewhere north of 80 dollars a pound in order to incentivize any new production so the price of the commodity now is around 50 dollars it still has a long way to go before we can really start incentivizing most projects to come into production we're fortunate because our uh, project is in the Athabasca Basin. It's high grade, it's shallow, so it'll be a, a very low cost operator. Once we get it into production, it'll be one of the lowest cost operators in the world, and that has tremendous advantages over just about every other project out there. That's right. So, talking about your team, are you ready for the further moving on forward? Like, do you have enough 
expertise, technicians, and managers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we um, we started off as an exploration company. You know, we had a, a team really uh, geared towards making discoveries, and we were the best, most successful uranium company in the business at it. You know, with uh, with our uh, our discoveries in the Athabasca Basin. And so, as we've moved the project forward and it's evolved into being a development story. We've likewise sort of evolved as a company and, and started bringing in new expertise, new mine engineering, horsepower, uh, people with a great deal of experience on the permitting side and also on community issues, um, you know, for being able to work with the indigenous groups in the area and build agreements and trust. So, yeah, we've, we've really added to the team. Those are really the pillars that are necessary in order to take it to the next level. So we've really been rebuilding fission into being a, a developer and ultimately will be a uh, you know a mining company as we as we move this project forward so you know it does keep evolving but we're certainly um, yeah we've, we've got the expertise right now in house that we need in order to take it through this next uh, this next level of work that we're doing great yeah so what would you say is the most driver of the future growth in one year well you know, it's got to be the price of the commodity is is absolutely critical. Obviously, there's a, we think it's it's on its way going higher, but the other factor that's really, really, really important is is political risk, geopolitical risk. In other words, um, some jurisdictions are better than others. So a lot of uranium right now comes out of say Russia and and uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. You know, so. Um, I, what I think is happening is, uh, you know, the North American assets are certainly taking a, a higher profile. They're going to become more and more important as a stable source of supply for uranium, uh, you know, throughout the, the future. So I think the future is really bright for the commodity, and it's really, really bright for companies that are operating in geopolitically safe, uh, safe environments such as, such as we are. So I'm, you know... Couldn't be more optimistic and bullish on you know, our prospects. That's good. So that's the end of my questions. Thank you for your day today, Ross. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.